Thank you everybody for joining. It's one minute past, so I'll get going now. So uh, uh, just seeing the uh, comments in the chat window, I wasn't talking before, but I am now. So hopefully you can all hear me and see my screen. Um, so I'm going to assume unless you shout that you can and get cracking. So um, thank you everyone for joining. We are, um, I'm Bruce Cullen. For those who don't know me, I'm the Director of Products here at Cookdown. And today um, we are here to talk about a new version of the SCOM connector for ServiceNow, version 1.5, which is live today, just launched. So before we dig into the cool new features, I guess it's worth understanding what it is. So just as a bit of background, really, uh, the SCOM connector is made up of three things. Each of these things is sold as sort of individual products, but is a suite, so they work better together. To start with, we have Alert Sync. Alert Sync is all about pushing SCOM alerts up into ServiceNow as incidents to automate the incident creation process. It works with event management from ServiceNow or standalone um, and automates that process. Then we have Discovery, which is all about populating ServiceNow's CMDB, Configuration Management Database, with CIs or configuration items from SCOM's vast object store. And then finally, we have Mapping, which is all about the joining the dots in between those individual CIs uh, with their relationships. What's the point in knowing about the status of a database unless you know the applications that run on top of, uh, of it? So that's the background to uh, what we're, we're doing here today. Um, so let's talk about what's new. So um, the first thing to talk about is on the discovery front. Um, we're really excited to announce regular expression support. Um, it's a really cool, useful feature and it's got some really good kind of use cases in being able to manipulate the data that we get out of uh, SCOM before we push it up into ServiceNow. Um, so, uh, let's look at what was um, uh, in place kind of before this release. So this would be a, a sort of typical payload for Linux servers. We've got the name fields, the, the core count, the RAM and the OS pushed up using our green keys from SCOM. And uh, when this is run through our engine um, for a server called server 01, this is what you would get. So you'd get the core count, the RAM and the OS replaced and the name replaced as well. So cool, what's the problem? This all looks fine to me. Wrong, this is not okay. And the reason why is this guy here. If you have a blank CMZB, this payload will work perfectly well. Um, the issue comes in where you have other discovery sources. So if you had say ServiceNow's own discovery tool and Cookdown discovery, this would create duplicate CIs because the name, ki uh, name attributes is what is used by ServiceNow's identification and reconciliation engine to decide whether something is unique or not. And for ServiceNow discovered CIs, they use the NetBIOS name, not the FQDN. Now for some classes, that's not a problem because you have both the NetBIOS name and the FQDN available for selection. But in the case of Linux servers, um, that data is simply not available in SCOM. So up until today, um, if you had, if you wanted to push up Linux servers, you'd either have to accept duplicates um, or not use SCOM for Linux server population, which is a real shame um, because we have some uh, customers, some people are looking at this product who have a large number of them and want to get this value. So uh, now let's have a look at what this would do with regular expression support, which is, as I say, new in version 1.5 launching today. So. Everything is the same in this payload, exactly the same, with one change, which is our name field. We're going to put in the regular expression syntaxing. So we um, start the payload with uh, regex. We put our key in, exactly the same key as before. And then we put in our regular expression after the commas. Let me just explain this regular expression quickly, because um, not everyone's familiar with them. I certainly wasn't until fairly recently. So, um, forward slash, uh, sorry, backslash D, capital D, matches non-numeric characters in the uh, what this key would return. And um, we have f uh, backslash lowercase D, uh, bleh, backslash lowercase D, which would match numeric characters. And then we have asterisks in here to match all of this type. So when you consider the server name in question is server dash one, we would match from the beginning 
all non-numeric characters, so server dash, and then it would stop because it would break on the numeric characters. So then we need the backslash uh, lowercase d, ex, um, asterisk to, mask, to match all of the numbers, so then 01, so it would break at the full stop, which is what we want. Um, final thing to explain here is, um, unlike with standard regular expressions, we have an additional backslash in here. This is required to escape a backslash in JSON because um, it's a protected character. So let's look at the result of this when passed through our engine. <clears throat> so same server, server 01. The result would be this. So we would get server dash 01 without the full FQDM with that same key. So this allows us to now push up Linux servers into our CMDB and um, get value, extra value from all of that awesome data that is in SCOM already. There are many use cases for this, and this is one of the simple ones. I'm sure there are some I haven't even come across yet, um, but it's a really powerful feature. And, and there we go, that's regular expression support. So this looks good, thumbs up. So um, there are a few other features in Discovery that are, are new today. We have schedules. So uh, from 1.5 onwards, we can configure a different schedule for each class in SCOM. So here we have a screenshot of the console and you'll see on the far right hand side I have different days and times for each of these discoveries. So um, if you wanted one of these payloads, let's say cluster to go up once a week only, you could configure that and configure all the, all the other ones to run every day at a set time. Um, as well as the ability to disable scheduling altogether in the, in the screenshot for example these bottom three, because the schedule is disabled, these will be run manually. So in this example here, only this top uh, class, which is IS10 ASP.NET application endpoint will run on the schedule. So there we go, awesome feature. Uh, it will ensure your CMDB is up to date where objects change frequently or where objects change at all. This is great for where new stuff is discovered by SCOM and also for where things are undiscovered by SCOM. Because um, if you know everything apart from the, the uh, if you know what's changed in ServiceNow, you can start to uh, mark the stale CIs as stale and use ServiceNow staleness feature to identify those items. Um, the other great thing about this, um, the ability to do this on a per class basis, is if we know some classes don't see a whole lot load of change, so clusters are a great example of that, then we can not put extra load on SCOM for those classes. We also have a modify functionality in 1.5. So this is the ability to change a discovery once saved. So anything from the payload itself through the timeout, discovery source, schedule, that kind of thing. Um, it's a simple enough feature, not much to kind of see, um, but it's new in 1.5. Okay, so that's enough slides for discovery. I'm going to jump into a demo example and we'll come back to slides to talk about alert sync. So, live demo time. Uh, this is the SCOM console, obviously. We're looking at cook down discovery. And we're going to have a look at a real live example for regular expressions. So here, what we're looking at is our IS10 ASP.NET application endpoint um, payload. It's set up, it's pushing CIs up into service now. <clears throat> and it's all working okay. Um, as with the Linux server example, there is an issue here. I'm going to recreate this payload and you will see what the issue is. So if I go create discovery, I'm going to disable enterprise application sync, and I'm going to select the IS10 ASP.NET application endpoint class and find an object from it. Here are the keys, but I've got the uh, payload in my clipboard already to see what we've got, nothing awry so far. We'll validate this payload to check the JSON is good and go next, and here we see our issue. So for this class, the website class, the name and the TCP ports are required by ServiceNow's identification and reconciliation engine um, for deciding whether, uh, whether a, a CI incoming is unique or not. And the issue is on this TCP port field. So this is what we would get into in ServiceNow. Um, asterisk, colon, 443, blah, 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 blah. And what you would get from service now is simply 443 in this case. So in other words, if we push this payload into service now, we would get duplicate CIs. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to apply our regular expression um, to uh, to this so that so that we uh, work around this problem. I'm just going to quickly find uh, the line I want from a notepad file so I don't have to type it all for you. So we're going to put in the regular expression syntaxing here, which starts off with regex like that. We then have our key. At the end of the key, we'll put in a comma, and then in single quotes, we'll, we'll put our regular expression. So for this one, I want um, slash slash D plus. So in this case, D matches numeric characters, so 443, and plus means match one or more numeric characters. So in other words, all of those numbers, four, four, and three, and that would be all that would be found because the rest of that uh, key's data is uh, text that we would strip or symbols. Um, we'll just finish off the syntaxing, and what you'll see is the key turns yellow. The M, sorry, regex syntaxing rather turns yellow. So you can see it's a valid regular expression that the formatting is correct. We've got our green key as before. So now if I validate this payload to check it's good JSON, oh, it helps if I can, uh, if I can, I'm going to cheat. Rather than try and figure out what I've done wrong, I'm just going to cut and paste uh, regular expression of this line from a, from a notepad file. It will be something in the syntaxing, no doubt. Probably put, uh, I can see what I did. I put an extra space in there. Doesn't matter. So this payload will now validate successfully and you'll see on the summary data, port 443. So we've stripped all the extra stuff, all the um, colons and the FQDN of the machine the website runs on um, in service now land that isn't needed because you have the relationships to the web server and the Windows server underneath it. So. Um, I'm just going to save this and before I do this I'm going to have to just quickly remove this existing payload from SCOM because otherwise it will go it's already there so I'll just remove this and we'll go back to our wizard and save this payload okay and there it is right in front of my eyes and I'm going to run this now to push up CIs from this class while well, this is churning in the background. Okay, cool. So this is ServiceNow. What we're looking at here is the website class in ServiceNow. And you can see all of the CIs I already had pushed up. So you can see their name and you can see this issue here with the ports. Um, if I start to hit refresh, the CIs should start rolling in. Yes, here we go from my new discovery. So you can see um, that we've successfully replaced all of this with simply 443. Obviously my demo lab is really small, which is great for webinars, but this will also work at scale. Um, so now I need to push up everything from SCOM. Um, as, for, as the TCP port uh, attribute is required for identification and reconciliation, and this value is different from this value, I'm creating duplicates here. So you'd want to get this right to start with or pull out all the old ones first. So that's the first thing I have to show. Um, so, we're going to go back into slide land now. We're going to go over here and jump onto Alert Sync. So Alert Sync is part of the same suite as Discovery, which is why uh, we're talking about them together. So what's new in Alert Sync? So to get you started, we have a guided setup baked into the ServiceNow store app from here on in, which is really great for just getting going. Um, it's a, a sort of cut down set of instructions, the bare minimum to be able to be successful. It means you don't have to go and find documentation or figure this thing out yourself. You would just get going with what's in there. Really great for trials and means you don't have to keep jumping to websites and videos and whatnot. It's all in one place. Um, we have more data for those alerts that we push up from SCOM. So from this release onwards, we have the site ID field. Um, it's used by MSPs where they have multiple customers in one SCOM instance. MSPs is managed service provider, should have said that earlier. Um, so uh, this allows them to have incident creation rules that do different things based on the site ID fields, attributes, properties. And we also have the context field, which is super useful for troubleshooting. So this did exist in the old app in the case without event management. We have included it for event management as well which means for event management rules, you can do all the cool stuff 
uh, with event management um, using the data in that context field to create event management rules from that data. And finally, and most importantly, we've introduced weight rules into 1.5. So what are weight rules? In a nutshell, they let you add a delay um, to incoming SCOM alerts um, before figuring out whether we're going to create incident um, from or not. So why do you want to do that? Why would you want to hold back alerts rather than get incidents raised as quickly as possible? Answer is pretty straightforward. Think of things like port flaps and a good old CPU utilization graph here. So in this example here, I'm looking at an hour and over 80% um, I have uh, a monitor set up and it will raise an alert when the CPU spikes above 80%. So this case here. So you can see there are two spikes above 80% in this graph I have. Um, so when, uh, when everything's looking okay, the monitor will recalculate and it will automatically close alerts in, in the good times where utilization is below 80%. So you can see from this graph here, we have one spike that's about a minute in duration. Um, the first spike, and we have another spike that is uh, about five minutes long so we would get <coughs> excuse me we would get two alerts from this uh, so the thing we have to figure out here is are is that something we want do we want incidents for both of these spikes the answer might be yes in which case you don't need weight rules but for the vast majority of customers the answer is not yes uh, they only want incidents uh, for things that require action immediately um, so they may want one for um, the longer of the spikes, but not for the shorter one. They may not want to see uh, incidents for either of these spikes at all. <clears throat> so let's assume for a minute they want um, anything more than four minutes, any alert that's open for more than four minutes to result in an incident. Um, let's look at how uh, life was before weight rules came along to compare. So in this example here, uh, CPU goes up to 80%. Uh, for a minute, a SCOM alert is raised. It's pushed through into service now, and as an alert record, that alert record is evaluated against incident creation rules, and a match is found, so an incident is raised. One minute passes, that SCOM alert closes, which marks the alert record as closed too. But we have this incident here. I mean, with the current pre 1.5, you could add in scripts to govern whether the incident is also closed, which is desirable in some cases, but in some customer cases, this is simply not required. You do not want this incident. So now uh, live with weight rules. So same scenario, uh, Scomola is raised um, when uh, above 80% utilization is hit. It's pushed through into service now as an alert record. But this time, rather than going straight to an incident creation rule, we are evaluating it against a wait rule. Um, and it hits a wait rule and it's told to wait for four minutes before it's allowed to raise an incident. So then because this first spike is only a minute long, the SCOM alert would close, resulting in the alert record to be marked as closed. Our four minutes ticks by and at the end of it, we're matching against an incident creation rule again. And this time we are not going to find a match because one of the conditions of our rule uh, could be that the SCOM alert is not in a closed state. So there's no incident raised. Great for kind of weeding out um, those spikes and whatnot. Um, yeah, there we go. And that's how weight rules are kind of practically used. Let me just get my cursor back. There we go. So demo time, let's see this in uh, operation. Um, so jumping back to my demo box here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into service now. I am going to look at my incident creation rules here and I have some already set up. I've got one for SQL um, incidents or alerts, one for Active Directory and one for everything else. So I'll always get an incident None of these are await rules. Um, so what I'm going to do here is create a wait rule for the first time. So you can create wait rules that, are put, that have conditions in them to only match the case for say SQL or Active Directory or whatever. But for my demo, I'm going to create one that applies to all incoming SCOM alerts. 
So over here I've got a checkbox to say this is a weight rule. When checked, the UI changes and you get this weight duration box here. So in here I'm going to say um, we want a weight of a minute. I'm going to give it a name. <clears throat> and I'm going to mark this rule as active and make sure it's my highest priority rule. So it'll make it process in order 10. And then we give it conditions. So this is how you can say that weight rules should only apply to some incoming SCOM alerts. But in this case, I'm going to make it apply to all incoming SCOM alerts by saying alert ID is not empty. All SCOM alerts have an alert ID. So there we go. I'm going to submit this. And then I'm going to push through a um, an alert from SCOM. This guy here will do, um, oops, wrong state. Let's set it to state to create incident, miss click. So in this case, I have set up my connector from SCOM to only push alerts through to service now where they're in state to create incident. Um, so um, in that case, uh, the connector is set up to wait for a minute um, before pushing them through. So when we see this forwarding state field update to something, um, there we go, it will start the process of pushing it up to service now. So if I jump back to service now and go through to my SCOM alerts, we should see it come through to the top of this list in a bit. So I'm going to smash refresh until it appears, um, which takes a moment or so. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to look at see what questions are, are coming into the chat window. Let's see what we've got. Um, so yes, weight rules can be configured for each and different monitors. We support SCOM 2012 R2 and above, including 2019 and all the UR um, update rollups that have been released. We test them. Event management is not required. Um, it will work with or without event management. In the case without event management, uh, you would download our store app, which looks like this. These tables are part of our store app um, and contain a table in which SCOM alerts go, plus the incident creation rules themselves. If you use it with event management, um, which is also a common, uh, a common thing, then you wouldn't have our store app. You would simply push alerts from SCOM up into event management. There's a checkbox in our UI that governs that. Um, so all things are possible. Um, we support ServiceNow, uh, Kingston and above versions, including Orlando. Um, are there any other questions I've missed? Let's see. Okay, there we go. So here's the SCOM alert. It's come in. And you can see the rule it's hit is my wait rule. So it hasn't yet got an incident. If I click into this SCOM alert, you've obviously got all of the information about the alert itself. If I scroll down here, you see... Um, it's at the wait rule, no incident here under incident attributes, but what I'm going to do is go on to the alert history tab. So here you can see uh, what exactly has happened with this thing. So um, starting the wait rule for rule called wait rule with a duration of one minute. So you can see it's hit this rule, I called it wait rule, and we've got a minute to wait. So um, we'll see what happens. After one minute, what I'm expecting to see here is um, the timer and passes, the so one minute time passes, and then it's pushed through to the incident creation rules, which are a lower priority. I can see here, there we go, from the squiggly here, that's happened. So if I refresh the page, what I'm expecting to see under incident attributes is, yes, it's a match to rule, in this case, SQL, uh, the SQL rule, and it's been given an incident. There we go. If I go through to my alert history, you will see uh, what exactly has happened. Wait complete, rerunning incident creation rules, perfect. Um, because these three bits of information all came in in the same second, if you look at the timestamp here, it's pretty quick. Um, they don't uh, necessarily fall in, in the order. Uh, the UI sorts by, by time, but if they all come in at the same time with the smallest granularity being one second, they appear out of order. But there we go. So the alert's been assigned to incident creation rule SQL and it's created an incident. So there we go. That's weight rules in action. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you can um, do what you like here. If we gave this a condition that said, uh, the name of the alert must contain SQL, which is the same condition as I have in my SQL incident creation rule, um, that that would only hit, uh, only hit those and everything else wouldn't get the incident creation rule, uh, the weight rule, sorry. 
And that's weight rules in action. It's really quite simple and that's part of its power. Um, they just do what they say on the tin, which is great. Okay, uh, back to slide land now. Two seconds while I get there. Okay, so that is all the cool new stuff we have to show today. And with one exception of something we have to uh, mention today, unfortunately, in some respects, um, obviously COVID-19, um, a very serious uh, thing indeed, has been doing the rounds and it's been affecting businesses worldwide, including us. We're all now working from home. So uh, a webinar from home is, is a new one for me. Uh, we did one on Monday for the first time and it's affecting all of our lives um, and will be affecting all of you guys too. Um, so this is unfortunately for us going to be the new normal, at least for a time, a period of time. We have whole companies remote working, some for the very first time. So we have company culture changes coming in literally overnight in some cases, as uh, countries go on lockdown and force people to kind of work from home. We have uh, changes in the way that companies acquire uh, customers. If you're a retailer and you have physical shops and you have a website and in the olden days, the good old days prior to all of this, you had a 50-50 split between your website and your physical shop. Now, no longer the case. Your shop's likely closed and you'll be selling everything online. So the way we pick up customers changes. And finally, um, all of that automation, the glue that holds all of our systems together um, becomes really, really key and we'll need additional automation where we didn't need it before. So this leads to changes in the way our business operates. Um, and again, all of this is happening overnight in super short notice. Um, so what this means for us as people who know SCOM and ServiceNow is the importance of monitoring must to change. It can no longer be relegated to a dusty corner of your IT um, department. It has to be front and center because um, oversight is critical over what you do. Lord of the Rings picture, thought it would be good, a good one to pick here. Seeing what's going on is super key. So going back to those examples we mentioned earlier, um, in the case of um, businesses working from home overnight, if you're a shop that uses VDI, for example, you may have had 20% of your employees remotely connecting to your VDI environment before. Now everyone's using that platform. So guess what that means? If that platform goes down, the impact is going to be a whole bunch greater than it would have been before. So keeping on top of it is key. Um, if you have, uh, in the case of your shop, your website goes down. Remember, 100% of your sales are now going through that website rather than 50-50 splits. If your website goes down, you're not going to make any sales. A large impact for your business. And in the case of your automation, if that goes down, the impact of it will be greater than once before. Um, you may lose customers as a result of it. You may be spinning up new automation. Um, to cope with what's going on using tools like Scorch. Um, so oversight is critical. So for this reason, from today, we are introducing a new pack for AlertSync in response to this uh, called our Business Continuity Pack. And what is that? Essentially, it is AlertSync as you know it, and we'll be giving it away for free for the next 90 days. We think this is a really good uh, a sort of appropriate response as businesses will be sort of struggling with this new, hopefully temporary world. Um, but having oversight uh, over your SCOM alerts is, is more important than ever. Getting them up into service now will play a large part of that because as they're, if they're incidents, you can route them to the right people, get them resolved more quickly and get value from the monitoring you, you already have in place with SCOM, which is super valuable. We'll also uh, get you sort of going for free with free professional onboarding service. Um, so obviously it's documented so you can just get going yourself, um, but we'll, we'll get you set up um, as well. Typically to get this thing going, uh, we can get it going in a single meeting. There isn't much to it. There's an app that goes in uh, ServiceNow and a management pack that goes into SCOM and a bit of configuration. So it's relatively simple and we want to make sure that you guys are, are effective with this and continue to get visibility of your key scum alerts. Of course, we'll give you three free support throughout your use of the product. And finally, all of the cool features that we've just showed off are yours as well. So that goes live today. 
and uh, is a really good thing for the SCOM community and is an appropriate response, we think, to what's going on in the world. These, these are not normal times that we live in. Um, get your license now. Um, if you're interested, go to cookdown.com forward slash alertsync. There's a form on that page. Fill it in and we'll send you the license and tell you how to book your onboarding meeting. So uh, that brings us nicely to time. So that's everything we had time for today. If there are any other questions or any that I missed, we'll take them now in the chat window. Um, but if not, thank you very much for joining and I hope you enjoy the new version. So I'll take any questions now. Uh, so in response to your question, Kelly, yes, um, you don't, you're not obligated to buy after the 90 day period. You can stop using it after that period. It's entirely up to you. But yes, after that 90 day period, you would need to either buy it or, or you would stop getting use of it, essentially. What's the time needed for a ServiceNow admin to implement? Um, so all your ServiceNow admin actually needs to do is import, install the, the store app and grant permissions to you as the SCOM person, presumably, to set it up and to create a um, service account. So an owl will do the job, basically. It's not a particularly arduous process. Are there any other questions? Okay, so unless there are any other questions, thank you everyone for joining. Um, stay safe, everybody. Uh, it's a crazy world we're in right now and enjoy all the cool new features of the SCOM Connector for ServiceNow version 1.5, which is live now. Thanks very much, everyone. Speak to you all soon. Cheers. Bye.